About eight years ago, BMW made a controversial change and renamed all the two-door versions of the 3 Series to the 4 Series. Now, since then, the 4 Series has been completely redesigned into its second generation. And when I first tested the coupe model last year, I wasn't too thrilled with that. The massive beaver tooth grill which has been a point of controversy since it came out. Now, of course, BMW has other variants of the 4 Series, and today I'm out in Thermal, California to drive the latest version. This is the 2022 4 Series, more specifically M440i Grand Coupe. Now, Grand Coupe, of course, means that they've added an extra set of doors, given it a sleeker roof line, so it's essentially just a better looking version of the 3 Series sedan. So if you guys are in the market for a new, smaller BMW sports sedan, and you want something that stands out a little bit more versus a 3 Series, how does this all new Grand Coupe version of the 4 Series stack up? Stay tuned to find out. Before we get started, I want to give a brief shout out to the sponsor of this video, Keeps. Now, it's really surprising to me that two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're age 35. The best way to prevent this is to do something about it while you still have the hair left. This is where Keeps comes in because it's an affordable way to get treatment directly from your home. That's right, you can actually talk to a licensed physician online who will recommend the perfect treatment for you, custom tailored, of course, to your specific hair type. Now, I've been using Keeps for well over a year and a half now, and I've noticed quite a few things. One, my hair has come back in a completely fuller manner, and two, a lot of people have seemed to really notice it, or they're really surprised when I tell them that I was actually starting to lose my hair at an earlier age. Now, the best thing about Keeps is it's really easy to use. Basically, I take a pill once a day. It's a really small pill that I just take once in the morning, and then Twice a day, I'll put this mousse in my hair, once in the morning and once at night. Basically, I'll just put it in when I get out of the shower every morning and then before I go to bed. And this product has really helped my hair come back in a much fuller way. So if you guys are ready to take action and prevent even more hair loss, please be sure to visit the link in the description below and go to keeps.com forward slash redline, where you can save up to 50% off your first order. That's keeps.com forward slash redline. Red line. And now let's get back to the video. So typically I start these walk around showing you guys the front of every vehicle. However, because this video is focused on the butt of the new 4 Series, because that's where all the changes have been, I figured I'd show you guys the rear end first. Now this is particularly my favorite angle of the new 4 Series. I think BMW did a great job with the rear end styling. I love the short rear deck, of course. I love these rather attractive looking LED turn signals or LED tail lights. You have full LED tail lights, as you can see, turn signal, brake light and reverse light is all LED. And because this is the M440i, you have a more re aggressive rear diffuser, a more aggressive bumper in general. You can see you've got the piano black plastic or piano black paint down there. And then you have a unique sport tuned exhaust. This one has the three liter turbocharged straight six. So let's go ahead and fire it up so you can hear what that engine sounds like. <laughs> Of course, typical BMW, the engine has a nice sound, a very nice straight six growl. So I'm very happy, of course, to hear that. Now, the cool thing about the Grand Coupe is the fact that it's actually a hatchback. So push this little button over here. The hatchback is power operated on this model because it has an executive package. And then the trunk space, as you can see, is pretty large. BMW says you get about 12 cubic feet of space back here. 12 doesn't sound really right to me. If you compare that to the 3 Series sedan, which has 13, I can't find actual different numbers for this car because it's so new. new. In fact, this, this model here is a very early pre-production model, but as you can see, the seats still fold down in a 40-20-40 manner. So this is gonna give you significantly more space versus the coupe and the convertible, and of course the 3 Series sedan. So that's that reason alone is enough for me to wanna look at, look at this model versus a regular 3 Series. Now let's look at the side profile of the new Grand Coupe model because BMW made it significantly larger for this all new version. Remember, this is now in its second generation. It's known internally as the G26 body style. In fact, at an overall length of 188.5, this is a whopping 5.9 inches, basically six inches longer than the old model. It's now a half inch longer versus the new 4 Series Coupe and convertible versions. And I really like how BMW gave this an interesting design. The roof is very sloping, of course. It's got these door handles, which are a little bit more flush design, but they open in a traditional manner, just a different door handle versus the 3 Series. And then if you look at the wheels of this model, you can see 
This particular one here has an, a staggered setup, 19 inch wheel with this kind of bicolor black inner spoke wrapped in 255s in the rear, 225s in the front. So you have those staggered wheels and then you have the M Sport brakes when you guys go for the M440i model. Now, the one thing I'm surprised to see no panoramic sunroof is available on this car. You can get a sunroof, of course, but it's just a standard size. I would have liked to see BMW offer that. The side mirrors you can see have that typical BMW M design where it has this little cut through here. This is all for aerodynamics. Speaking of which, BMW says you have a drag coefficient of this new model at 0.28. It's an improvement of 0.01 versus the old generation. And then as you come around the front, you can see this Brooklyn gray metallic tester definitely looks pretty nice. I like the color combination of this one with the red interior. But then of course we have the grill of this vehicle. And how could we not talk about this grill? The massive twin kidneys, which are starting to, which look like beaver teeth. They do have active grill shutters, as you can see. And the car definitely looks better when you have the European plate. I will grudgingly admit that the grill is literally starting to grow on me as in I'm starting to notice BMWs without the big grill and they look a little bit odd. Uh, but you can see my tester has the full LED BMW laser light headlights with LED daytime running lights, LED turn signals, they're swiveling adaptive headlights, of course, and then no fog lights on this new generation model, just functional air vents. Uh, the front end itself, again, very controversial, but it looks good when you get it in certain colors. So overall, I think the design looks better, obviously, from the rear, but let me know if you guys prefer the styling of the coupe convertible or the Grand Coupe model. So let's move on to the interior of the new 4 Series Grand Coupe. You can see here's the key fob for the vehicle. You guys know this BMW key. It's part of their smart key access system. You can also use their digital key in which they give you a key card where you can access the vehicle kind of like the way Teslas uh, get access to the car. And then as you approach, you can see the door handles. These are the same door handles that I showed you guys or that I've seen on the new uh, 2 Series Coupe. So it's an interesting design. And then when you look at the interior, you can see the Brooklyn gray exterior of my tester is complemented by this Takora red leather interior. It's kind of like a dark cranberry leather. This interior is actually almost $1,500 extra, uh, which the seats themselves do look nice. It's a nice contrast between the gray. Uh, I want you to notice that my tester has manual seats. That is not going to be the case if you buy this vehicle. This is an early pre-production model, and BMW says for that reason it has manual seats. Uh, all of the other ones will have power seats. The door panels, you can see, they have a soft touch injection molded plastic, real aluminum trim, more leather over here. Uh, my tester also has the 16 speaker Harman Kardon stereo, which sounds pretty good. Down here it is softly padded, and then you get a little bit of storage in the door pockets. The window controls have the typical BMW high quality feel, although it doesn't have like the aluminum accented buttons or switches like you find on some of the more expensive BMWs. Now getting inside, you notice that the step in pretty much feels identical to the last uh, 4 series coupe and 3 series that I sat in. And then when I shut the door, the door has a really nice solid sounding thunk. So that's all going go, to give you a really nice impression of quality. Now the button to fire up the engine is right here by the shifter, typical BMW fashion. And because this has the 48 volt mild hybrid setup, it means you don't have a traditional starter noise. The starter noise instead kind of just whirs to life because it's kind of like a hybrid almost, but it's not a full, uh, full hybrid system because you cannot drive on the electric power alone in this type of vehicle. Now, I want to show you guys the interior. If you guys have seen the new 3 Series or 4 Series, it's pretty much identical. I really wish BMW would do a little bit something different with the interiors. You can see the dash has a soft touch injection molded plastic. My tester is missing the full upper stitched dash feature, which you can get for an extra charge. There is a nice heads up display that's included with the executive package. And then my tester also has the live cockpit professional. It's a 12.3 inch display there that's slightly customizable along with a 10.25 inch display here, part of BMW's iDrive 7.0 that includes over there wireless updates and wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. I really like BMW's current steering wheel, very thick rimmed, nice paddles on the wheel. It has a manual tilt and telescoping feature, which some competitors have gone to a, a power wheel. Would like to see BMW offer that as well, even though this is a four series. And then you can see the seats. They're just three level heated. BMW does offer cooled seats, but it's optional and it's a little hard to find in these models. Uh, I really think they should be included, especially at the price tag that my tester has. My tester also has this aluminum Textragon trim, which definitely looks good. You can also change that to wood or carbon fiber. Open that up, you can see there's a wireless phone charging pad in there, a USB-A charging port, two cup holders and whatnot. And then you have the shifter here that controls the eight-speed automatic. You can see there's a full 360 camera with my editor sitting on the ground there. And he's probably getting a little scared that I might run him over. Uh, but the camera quality and the res resolution is fine. It has parking sensors and whatnot. It also has their backup assistant. So it will basically uh, move the vehicle back into its space 
because it remembers how you pulled into the spot. So this is pretty much fine. Starting to look a little bit small compared to some of the new newest luxury brands, but BMW has a newer system in the i4, which is based off of this vehicle. The i4, I haven't had a chance to drive yet. Hopefully I will early next year is the all electric version of this car. Um, over here, you can see lots of additional buttons for your stability control off, your drive mode selector is here. You can see switching into sport changes the way the gauges look. It also opens up a baffle in the exhaust. There's also an adaptive mode. Um, sport, you can really hear the engine sound a little bit nicer there. Uh, and then you can see here, iDrive controller there if you don't wanna use the touch screen. Over here, you can see there's the embedded GPS, which works fine. It's pretty much what you expect from other BMW products. You also have BMW's personal assistant. So you can say things like, hey BMW, and of course it doesn't wanna work now, but it's probably going to annoyingly come on when I'm doing the driving scene. Going over here to the car icon, you can also change a lot of your different um, settings and whatnot. Uh, you can adjust so many different features. I like the graphics. iDrive 7.0 is among the best in the industry. It works relatively well. Now this is nice and padded right here where your armrests, or for your armrests, it's a open, it's a pretty deep size center console when you open this up. It's got a USB-C charging port, of course. The seats are pretty comfortable and supportive. You can adjust this uh, bolstering as well when you guys have the power seat option that this one, again, has manual seats because it's an early pre-production model. And then above me, you can see here, the sunroof actually looks a little bit larger on the inside of the vehicle versus outside. It is a standard size sunroof, but it's a little bit wider and larger than a regular standard size sunroof. No panel roof is available, like I said. And then open here, you can see the glove compartment. It's a bin style, it's damped and lined with felt. So overall, the interior feels basically the same as a three series sedan, so you don't really get more room in the front. It's got most of the tech features that you'd like, but just know that some of the competitors, at, or some of BMW's competitors offer interiors that feel a little bit more high tech. Now, aside from the big trunk, another reason why you wanna go for the Grand Coupe version is obviously the back seat practicality. Now, compared to the three series, this does feel like it has a little bit less room because of that sloping roof line. I had to duck my head significantly, but you also get around 35 inches of legroom back here, which is about two inches more versus what you get in the coupe. Obviously there's a massive center tunnel here for that rear drive shaft, but you have rear seat air vents, your own set of climate controls, no heated back seats back here. I feel like it's an option. There's an empty button here and you have two USB-C charging ports. You have two storage pockets in each of the two front seats. And then in terms of leg room at five foot seven, I can get pretty comfortable, good foot space underneath here, decent amount of head space, uh, also have LED lighting. And then when you fold this down, you can see cup holders that are an armrest and you get two cup holders built in. So overall, the back seat is definitely more usable, usable but I believe the three series sedan offers a smidge more space. So once you look past the massive grill, let's lift up the hood and see what's powering the new four series Grand Coupe. Of course, just like the three series and the four series coupe and convertible, we have a choice of two different powertrains right now. The base version is the 430i. It has the familiar two liter turbocharged four cylinder that makes 255 horsepower. Of course, that's fine for most people. I'm more interested in this model because this is the M440i, which means we have a version of the B58 turbocharged straight six cylinder engine that powers so many other BMWs. The difference in this model, however, it also is the fact that it also is electrified. It has a 48 volt mild hybrid system, which is designed to smooth out the start stop uh, in this vehicle. And it also supposedly adds about 11 horsepower boost whenever it senses you need even more acceleration. Now, it doesn't add any actual horsepower to the baseline numbers of the, v of the straight six, but we have 382 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque. So obviously that's more versus the previous generation Grand Coupe, but this is the same power output as a three series and of course a regular four series. It all goes out through an eight-speed automatic transmission. It's a ZF automatic. Uh, X-Drive all-wheel drive is gonna be standard on the M440i while the two-wheel drive, while the rear drive version is limited to the 230i, so that's something to keep in mind. BMW says you should get to 60 in about 4.4 seconds, and fuel economy is not bad, considering this is a big, heavy car. It's rated at 22 in the city, 29 on the highway, and because this is a larger vehicle this year, it's obviously gonna be heavier. Uh, BMW says this one here weighs in at just over 4,100 pounds. All right, since we've had some time with the 4 Series Coupe and Convertible, I'm expecting the Grand Coupe model to drive practically the same. This is the heavier option versus the coupe, but I don't believe it's heavier than the convertible. But since I've got my zero to 60 timing equipment, let's go ahead and test it out. BMW says 4.4 seconds. That's usually conservative. So let's see what we can get here. Let me first actually turn off the traction control, we'll put it into sport and we'll brake torque it. <laughs> All right, 
right, first run we got 4.27 seconds and that's with my extremely fat editor next to me who's probably slowing us down by at least a half a second. No, <laughs> seriously though, BMW says 4.4. I figured it'd be conservative. That's typically what the Germans are like. And 4.27 is pretty fast considering this is not a full on M model. So I'm pretty happy with that number. I'll retest this car again once I have it for a week back home. But just out here in Thermal, California, we're obviously in the desert. This car is in its element right now. It's not terribly hot outside, it's about 81 degrees, but it feels plenty fast. And it's also paired with an eight speed automatic that is really quick and responsive. Uh, and this straight six also is a gem. It's very smooth, it sounds good, it has a nice growl. And when you brake boost it, it does remove a lot of the turbo lag that you feel initially. But overall, I think as an enthusiast, you know, yes, you could get an M3, which I'll be driving the all-wheel drive M3 later. This is going to have plenty of performance for a lot of people. Now, just driving the vehicle normally here, let's put it into its comfort setting here. We'll put the transmission back into normal, turn the stability control back on. This car does have an adaptive suspension, and once you do once you do that, we put it all into its softer settings, it feels like a luxury car again. It rides really nicely. The exhaust gets a little bit quieter. Uh, visibility in here is also pretty good. The A-pillar here is a little bit fat. The view out of the back is compromised a little bit versus the coupe uh, because of that sloping roof. But if you're, I mean, comparing it to a regular three series, obviously this is gonna be compromised a tad, but it looks so much better and a lot more unique that I think most people are gonna wanna go for that. In terms of driver assistance, my tester also has the full like driver assistance professional package. So it has BMW's like traffic jam assist where it'll actually lane keep um, for you at lower speeds when you're just stuck in bumper to bumper traffic. Um, so it all works fairly well, and it's a little bit higher tech versus the new 2 Series, which I will be showing you guys that video uh, the following week. But basically, if you guys like the 4 Series coupe and convertible, you're going to like the Grand Coupe, and I think it's probably going to be my favorite body style. Now, I want to put it back into sport mode here because this is how most people probably end up driving their BMWs. They are extremely fun to drive vehicles. Remember, the all-wheel drive system in this car has a rear drive bias, so you, it will give you the ability to step the tail out from time to time when you uh, put your foot down and make a hard turn. This does not give you the ability to completely shut off the front axle and give you full-on rear drive mode. That's reserved for an M3 and an M4. Uh, but for those of you who live in those you know, snow-belted areas, you're gonna want the all-wheel drive grip this car has, but it also gives you that balance. This car has a near 50-50 weight distribution, and you do like, feel the weight of this car as well. It's a 4,100 pound car. There was times where BMWs used to be among the lightest in the segment, uh, and they're pretty much just as heavy as all of their competitors. That's what you have to get basically when you have all this new modern safety tech. But you also have a, stu a structure that is very stiff. And remember, this car is the basis of the i4, their full electric sports sedan that competes with the Tesla Model 3. Now, I haven't had a chance to drive the i4 yet. I should be driving that sometime in January when it goes on sale in America later next year. Uh, but if this is the way the Grand Coupe drives the internal combustion engine version, which feels very much like a typical BMW, uh, the electric version of this car is going to be even faster. In fact, that one will get to 60 in, I believe, 3.7 seconds, which is, again, conservative. Uh, but the fact that this will do you know, low four seconds all day long makes this car a very appealing vehicle, and I think it's going to satisfy a lot of people looking at a regular 3 Series, but again, want something a little bit more. Hey guys, I wanna take a quick break to thank you all for watching this video and talk about a bunch of new merch that we just added. It's all about the thunk. If you're interested in showing your support by purchasing this shirt, as well as a few others, be sure to visit the merch shelf located just below this video. Now, speaking of support, be sure to like, subscribe, and be sure to turn on all those notification bells so you're always alerted every time we make a new upload. So some of you may question, what's the point of having two four-door vehicles that's roughly the same size that also roughly occupy the same price category? Well, you could ask that question to Audi and Mercedes because vehicles or people in this segment just really like having choices. And that's exactly what BMW is offering you with the new 4 Series Grand Coupe. It has all the things that I expect to like with the 4 Series. It's really fun to drive. It's very quick to accelerate. It has amazing handling. It's got an interior that still kind of lets me down because it's 
got good build quality and good tech. It's just a little bit on the boring side. But really what BMW has done here is they've made me forget a little bit about those massive kidneys on the front because of this. I think this is the best angle of the new 4 Series. I love the sleek flush mounted door handles. I love the sloping roof. I love the actual design of the vehicle, especially when you look at it from the rear. And obviously in typical BMW or luxury car fashion, if you guys want to basically get less practicality and more style, it's gonna cost you more money because this car starts at about $45,800 to start for the base 430i. Add about 12 grand if you guys want the six cylinder model, the M440i version. Compare that to the starting price of a three series at around $41,000 and it's a little odd to be paying more for less space and more style, but that's kind of the norm that we live in in today's luxury vehicle space. Now, of course, my tester here stickers for a grand total of $68,000 because the base um, M440i starts at around $58,000. This one's about 68 because of options, which makes it pretty darn expensive. There was a time where you could buy an M4 for that money. However, the M4 has now starts at around $79,000. So you're gonna be spending obviously a lot more for the full M version. And really, there is a lot to like about the M440i. I love the practicality. I think it's quick enough. And I wonder if BMW is going to do a full on M version of this car. Something tells me they won't because it'll interfere too much with the M3 sedan. But really, if you guys are looking for the ultimate three series sedan and you want something that stands out that offers more practicality in the trunk, this is definitely the one that I would choose out of the entire three and four series family. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2022 BMW M440i Grand Coupe. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook. And as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.